Good evening, everyone. My name is Mr Pycroft and I'm the head of sixth form here at Highfield School and it's my pleasure to welcome you to our very first virtual sixth form open evening. Over the course of the next 30 or so minutes, we're going to try and answer as many of your questions as we can and try and provide you with as much information as we can about what it's like to study with us here at Highfields. I'm really pleased to say that this evening, alongside myself, we've got two colleagues from the sixth form team, Mrs Corbett, who's our sixth form manager, and Mr Maxfield, who's our assistant sixth form manager. We've also got our head boy, Aaron Patel, and our head girl, Louise Sol Braddock, who've come along this evening to really give you a flavour of the student experience and what it's like for them to study with us here at Highfields. So without further ado, I'll go straight to the first question, which is, when will I know whether I've got a place in your sixth form? So the technical answer to that question, I suppose, is after you get your GCSE results. All of the places in sixth form are confirmed at that stage once we know that you've met our entry criteria and you can find lots of information about the entry criteria on our school website. But in reality, you will get an indication much earlier than that in the application process. So once you've applied to the sixth form and we've had your reference and your predicted grades through from your current school, and then you've had an interview with a member of the sixth form team in school, at that point, we will write to you with a conditional offer letter, which will basically just say, if you meet our entry criteria, you will have a place in our sixth form. Now, when that letter gets sent out, very much depends on when you apply and when we can get the rest of the process done. But broadly speaking, around the springtime is when we send many of those conditional offer letters out. So you should know well in advance of doing your GCSEs whether or not there is a place at Highfields waiting for you, assuming that you meet our entry criteria. But once again, there is a video that we've put together on our website as part of our virtual open evening that goes through the whole application process. So if you have any more questions about that, that might be a really good place to, to have a look. OK, thank you very much for that question. We've had another question come through. This is quite an interesting question. What is the best thing about being a Highfield sixth form student? So I think rather than answer that one myself, it seems to make sense that I'll hand over to the two students that we've got with us. So first of all, I'll hand over to Louise, who's our head girl. One of the best things about being a student here at Highfield sixth form is the high standard of teaching. So teachers are subject specialists, which means that they can challenge their students in lessons through regular topic tests and questions in lesson. But as well as this, they are also extremely supportive, which creates a very supportive learning environment. Thank you, Louise. And then if we hand straight over to Arian, who'll give you his perspective. Hi, I think the best thing about being a high field student is the enrichment opportunities. There are many different experiences that will help build will help you build your future. For example, I've taken part in the Duke of Edinburgh Award through the school and I've also done a first aid course done by, led by Mrs Corbett. It was great fun. And I think all of these different sort of, all these different enrichment opportunities have allowed me to build on my confidence, my, my self-esteem and has inspired me to go on, to look further, in, look further and develop on my education ideas and what I'd like to do in the future. Brilliant. I think building on what Arian was saying there, we, we do place an awful lot of emphasis on, on the wider development of students here in the sixth form. So Louise is absolutely right. One of the, the really key aspects of our sixth form provision is that genuinely high quality teaching and learning. But alongside that, we spend an awful lot of time making sure that students have access to high quality opportunities to enrich themselves, to develop their personal skills. So Arian mentioned there that the first aid that we offer um, Duke of Edinburgh, but we also have a lot about work related learning as well. But I won't talk too much about that now because I'm sure Mr. Matsfield will mention that uh, in, in a while. So moving on to the third question, will we be able to take a subject in A-levels if we didn't take it at GCSE? For example, if we haven't done business studies for GCC, would we be able to do it in sixth form? Um, there's not necessarily a straightforward answer to that question. If you haven't done a subject before and that subject is listed as part of our entry criteria, we would need to have a discussion. Uh, it wouldn't be something that we'd automatically rule out at this point, but equally, if it is an important part of our entry criteria, we would need to have a look at whether or not 
the programme of subjects that you have studied at GCSE has suitably prepared you for that particular A-level subject. So if you think that you're in that position whereby you're really keen to study a particular subject at A-level, but you're not sure that you've done the right combination of subjects at GCSE, I think the best thing to do is just to get in contact with us at school, explain the situation that you're in, and then we can give you the best possible advice when we know a bit more about your circumstances. Um, so thank you very much for that question. The next question that we have had through is what extracurricular activities do you offer? Um, well, I've already kind of touched upon that a little bit and so has Arian, but I'll hand over at this point to Mr. Maxfield who coordinates a lot of the enrichment opportunities in our sixth form. Hi, good evening. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about the extracurricular offer of, that we have as part of the sixth form programme. And from our point of view, it's a really, really important part of the sixth form offering that we give to students both in year 12 and year 13. Now, part of this offering involves a variety of different um, aspects. A main part is work experience. And we ask that all students within our sixth form complete a meaningful work experience placement during their time with us in sixth form. Now, by meaningful, we mean something that could benefit them in the future. So that might be a future career that they wish to pursue, or it might be something where they could learn a lot of skills that could then develop into something that they can take on and transfer into later life or into later studies, depending on what they plan to do in the future. We also have some uh, examples of um, experiences that happen inside of school. So we invite a lot of universities into school to lead different sessions. And this can either look and make part of the normal school programme or work as part of the extracurricular offering, which happens after school, which the students can have opportunities to attend. And we have a wide variety of what these activities can uh, include. These can be personal development skills or they can be subject specific. If it's subject specific it's generally led by a university and it will help them in their path to go and pursue that career in the future. Whereas if it's a more generic skill we might look at something like we get the guide dog charity in or we've done British Sign Language before. So it's skills that will develop the student and help them for, for later life. But all of these skills put together really make a whole rounded student that we can then look forward to pushing them on to future careers that they wish to pursue. Thank you very much for that, sir. Like I say, we, we've already touched upon that really strong enrichment programme and it is a key part of our offer here at Highfields. Um, so, the next question. Do you have school transportation for year 12 from the Aldersley area? We don't necessarily put on transport ourselves as a school, but we have really good um, sort of public transport links. So for example, there is the public bus stop right outside school and there's some really popular bus routes that run from town to Highfield. So if you can get into the town centre, it is very easy to get to the school using public transport, but we don't necessarily have a, a school transport per se. Um, that's that one. What time can year 12 students be on the school premises? in the morning and is there an area that they can go to? So there's, there's two questions there, I'll deal with one at a time. Um, our year 12 students, um, we like to have them in the building all day, every day. Um, the real reason for that is because in between the subject lessons that students have on their timetable, their study periods, we like to, to do independent study skills work with our year 12 students to really kind of get you into the good study habits that we know that you'll need if you want to be successful, not only in year 13, but for the majority of our students who go on to university as well. So if you're a year 12 student, you will attend your lessons as normal and the rest of the time you will have an opportunity to attend supervised private study, which is a really quiet focused area for you to get on with your work. Some students won't want to attend supervised private study and they may be given the flexibility to work elsewhere in the building. There isn't a sixth form common room per se or, or an area for them to go to. We actually really like the fact that our sixth form students are very much integrated in with the rest of the school. Um, so there's not a separate area for sixth form. We like our sixth form students to be a presence around the school. We like our sixth form students to role model the study behaviours and the conduct that we expect to see from all of our students from year seven through to year 13. And actually we think that, that ha having the sixth form students about and around the school really does contribute to that really focused and positive environment within the school building on a day to day on a day-to-day -day basis, excuse me. So thank you very much for that question. Uh, the next one, how many year 12 students do you have? Well, that's a very easy question to answer. Uh, for this year, we have 139 year 12 students. And I think we had 29 of those were external applicants from other 
uh, schools that came to join us. So we have a really good number of students who come to join us here at Highfields. And again, that adds something really nice to our sixth form, actually. It's really positive that so many of our year 11 students want to stay with us in sixth form. But equally, I think it's really nice for new students to come in. Often those new students bring something different and, and make sixth form that little bit special or that little bit different to what we've had previously. So that blend of Highfields sixth form, uh, Highfields current students, sorry, and new students to the sixth form is a really nice one. So what subject area does Mrs Corbett teach in? Mrs Corbett isn't actually a member of the teaching staff, although I'd be quite interested to see what she could do. Um, Mrs Corbett is part of our inclusion team and, and so is Mr Maxfield. So whilst myself as head of sixth form, I do teach social science and, and I'm a teacher. Mrs Corbett and Mr Maxfield, they are full-time inclusion members of staff, which means they don't actually teach. So they're on hand all day, every day to, to work with students, to support them in whatever way they need to be supported. If you've got any problems, you know there's a member of the sixth form team who will always be available for you to go and talk to them. And again, I think our, our really kind of um, comprehensive system of inclusion, or our really comprehensive inclusion team, is another reason why we have so much success in the school, because there is always that really important support network in place when students need it and when they call upon that. So, yeah, Mrs Corbett doesn't teach, but as I say, maybe, maybe we can get her in the classroom sometime next year. We'll see what she can do. Um, I'd like to know if it's possible to do a combination of maths, further maths, computer science and film studies A-level. Well, we certainly offer all of those subjects and looking at the combination, maths, further maths and computer science would certainly be a combination of three that we would definitely want to be able to facilitate. As a general rule though, we do not enrol students onto a four subject programme. Um, it's been a few years now, I think, since that was the standard. I know a, a few years back, so when I was in sixth form, for example, I started off with four subjects in year 12 and dropped down to three subjects in year 13. Nowadays, it's um, much more common for students just to start on the three subjects. The reason for that really being we no longer have AS levels, so there's not a qualification to be gained at the end of year 12. So we would only look to put students onto a three, program, a three subject program of study, like I say, further maths, maths and computer science would definitely be a combination we'd look to facilitate. But the one thing we do here at Highfields, I think, again, really helps us to offer the, the, the subject choices that students want, is we actually wait until we've had all of our applications in and we look at the subjects that students have chosen to, to study and then we build our timetable around the student choices. So what that means is it's very, very rare that we have to turn around to a student and say, actually, you can't do that combination of subjects because we, we, we're not able to offer it. Um, so yeah, we'd always try and be able to offer whatever combination you want, but it would usually just be a three subject program of study. Um, do I need to buy any specific equipment such as a laptop? Um, I'll, I'll answer part of that question, but then I'll also hand over to Mrs. Corbett, who will be able to say uh, a bit more about that as well. Um, as it happens, a laptop is one of the requirements that we have of all of our sixth form students. So. All our sixth form students are expected to be able to bring a device, be that a laptop or a tablet, for example. Um, a lot of the work that we do in sixth form is based around digital learning. And particularly this last year, obviously, remote learning has become such an important part of, of the provision that we offer. And it's been a huge benefit to us for each student to have their own laptop. Um, so that's one example of a piece of equipment that you would need. Beyond that, really, there are some subject specific requirements. Obviously, if you're going to study maths, you'll need a scientific calculator. But generally speaking, there's nothing really equipment wise beyond that that you would need. Um, you know, if it's particular resources or textbooks, in many cases, departments will be able to provide those for you um, or download uh, and give you um, resources that will support you in your learning. So it's not a huge amount that you have to purchase in advance. But if you are in a situation whereby there is something that you need and you think that that may be a problem, we can actually have, offer some support with that in school as well. And at that point, I'll hand over to Mrs Corbett, who'll talk a little bit more about that. Hey, good evening. Yes, Mr Pycroft's referring to the sixth form bursary. Um, we offer that on a discretionary basis for any students that have some degree of financial hardship. So whether that's in terms of equipment that you might need, whether it's getting to and from school, or it's general expenses about being in sixth form. So we offer that on a basis three times a year. Um, if your attendance is brilliant and your progress reviews are fantastic, um, then you will qualify for bursary. But then just come and talk to us at any time if you ever have any financial difficulties and we'll try and assist in any way we can. Thank you, Mrs Corbett. 
So thank you very much for, for those questions. It's really interesting. So the next question. I want to do two of my options at Highfields. Is it allowed to do a third option at a different school? And how do you address this when you apply to our sixth form? But like I said before, we have a really comprehensive um, program of subjects that we offer. So in, in the vast majority of cases, we're confident that we can facilitate your choices here at Highfields. There are a very small number of cases whereby um, it might be that we don't offer a particular subject that you wish to study. And in that eventuality, what we will do is work with you on a one-to-one -one basis. And we do take this very much on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, there are some local schools in the area that we have worked with in the past and organised partnership arrangements whereby a student may do two subjects with us here at Highfields and then one subject over at a partner school. But again, that's the vast, uh, the vast majority of our students do their three programme study here at Highfields. We have one of the broadest uh, curriculum offers across the city. And I say we, we can generally tend to accommodate most requests. Okay, thank you very much for that question. Um, what does it take to become a sixth form student? Ooh, it's almost like an existential question. Um, well, there's the obvious answer of you need to get good grades to get into the sixth form. But particularly here at Highfields, I think there's, there's a lot more to it than that. It's not just about what qualifications you've got on paper. It's about you as an individual. Um, if, if you've watched the, the video that I've put online for our virtual open evening, the first point that I make in that video is that we have really high expectations of our students and we expect our students to be incredibly aspirational for themselves. Um, and I think if, if you're the type of person who wants to be aspirational for yourself and who wants to come in, and you know, we, we do ask a lot of our students, we don't make any apologies for that, but in return, we give an awful lot back in terms of the support and the challenge that you need to achieve your full potential. And if you're the type of person or the type of individual and you think, actually, that sounds like the kind of environment where I'm going to flourish and where I'm going to be the best student that I can be, then I would definitely say that Highfields would be a place that I would consider looking at studying with. Okay. Um, how do teachers support students? I think um, Louise touched on that in particular a, a little bit earlier, but I, I do think it's about that level of expertise that our staff have. Um, so they understand their subjects really, really well. But I think really importantly, many of our staff understand, well, all of our staff, but many of our staff are exam board examiners. So they have a really strong understanding of how the students will be assessed and what students need to do on their exams in order to make sure that they get the, the maximum amount of marks that they can on any particular type of question. But again, it's not just about grades, it's about that kind of wider experience in the sixth form. So our teachers are very encouraging, they're really challenging. And I, th I think that kind of holistic development of the student doesn't only just come through our enrichment programme, it comes very much through the lessons that students have and the experiences in the classroom. And again, I'd say that the teaching and learning experiences that our students do have really are genuinely high quality. Okay, Who can I contact if I need help with something? That's quite a broad question. I suppose it would depend very much on what you needed help with. Um, if it's academic help, then obviously we would suggest, first of all, that you go to your subject teachers. The members of staff in this school genuinely are really very approachable. So if you've got a question that you need to ask, it doesn't matter if it's before school, after school, in the middle of the day, members of staff will find time to sit and work with you uh, and support you in any way that they can. If it's something different, if it's not academic, if it's pastoral or if it's welfare or if it's about, like you say, enrichment opportunities, then I would definitely recommend that you come and speak to a member of the sixth form team. And again, I'll hand over to Mrs. Corbyn now because in many cases, she's the member of staff who works with students and supports them in this regard. Yes, absolutely. Um, you've met the sixth form team now. So as Mr. Pycroft says, we're always available for you to come and talk to. So whether you've got any problems in school, so whether it's simply being in school, getting to school, you've got any issues with your lessons, come and talk to us. Or even if there's something <coughs> bothering you at home, for example, um, we can help, or if we can't help, we can signpost you to somebody who can. We've got a fabulous inclusion team as well. Um, we want you to be the best version of yourself that you can be. So we want to make sure that we support you in school any way possible so that I can see your smiling faces when you get your grades at the end of your time with us here at school. Thank you, Mrs. Corbett. Next question, we're flying through these. If I'm interested in psychology as a career pathway, is an A-level in English uh, a suitable qualification and also biology A-level, are they good options to take alongside A-level psychology? 
Well, that seems like a very sensible combination of subjects if you are interested in a career pathway relating to psychology. Obviously, A-level psychology you know, goes without saying that, that that's appropriate. Um, English is what we would refer to as a facilitating subject, which basically means the skills that you develop in English uh, are often highly sought after by a range of different um, subject areas in university, but also employers, apprenticeship providers in the future. Um, and again, biology works really well with uh, psychology because a lot of the skills overlap between the two subjects so there's quite a lot of actual A-level biology built into the psychology A-level course and so therefore they work really well as a subject combination together as well so English psychology and biology would seem a very very sensible combination of subjects. Okay. Uh, next question are you offering any applied subjects for year 12? Uh, we do offer applied subjects alongside our really comprehensive A-level uh, programme of study. So you can um, look, do applied subjects. We have applied uh, food science and nutrition. We have applied ICT, applied science. Um, we have applied criminology as well. So we do have quite a broad uh, range of applied qualifications that, that you can take with us. And what happens in many cases, students will do what we call a mixed economy, which is where, uh, whereby essentially you do some A-level subjects and some of our applied qualifications qualifications and that's absolutely fine as well and what we find is for many of our students that that combination of A-level study alongside the applied route is actually the best way forwards for them and we've had students that have studied applied subjects with us previously who've gone on to fantastic university courses who've gone on to get really successful apprenticeship places so the progression routes coming off some of our applied subjects are really really strong as well so if you do have a uh, if you want to have more information about the courses that we offer take a look at the website they're all listed on there as part of our virtual sixth form open evening but I'd also recommend that you take a look at the destinations page that we've shared as part of our open evening as well because actually if you look on there what you can see is not just the subjects that some of our students have done in the past but then what they've gone on to do in the future and how those subject combinations have helped them to be successful in their future and I think that's you know really important information for you to have when you're making your choices about your post-16 education. Okay. Um, at sixth form, is most work completed digitally rather than in written format? Like So, for example, you're allowed to type in lessons. Um, a lot of the work is done digitally, uh, and I think it's fair to say that given the advances in, in technology, um, things you know, like Microsoft Office and, and Teams and all those kind of things, it's increasingly the case that staff are beginning to use or developing their use of digital technology in the classroom. Um, it is still very much a subject by subject basis. Some subjects will rely on it more than others. I mean, obviously, subjects like computer science, for example, you'll spend an awful lot of time on the computer. Um, there are some subjects that still rely on, on essay writing. So the subject I teach, sociology, ultimately, you have to be able to write essays. So we do a, a blend of some digital work and some pen and paper work. So it does depend on, on subjects. But I think it's fair to say the trend is that digital technology is becoming an ever increasing presence in the sixth form provision that we offer and we think that it really is enhancing the teaching and learning experience that the students have with us. Okay next question what should I do if I don't know what I want to do as a career? Well I think this quite nicely leads into um, some of the work related learning stuff we do in school. Mr Maxwell has, has touched upon that already I'll hand over to him in a moment to talk a little bit more about that in detail um, but we know and we understand how important it is to help students make the right choices about their pathway in the future. It's important for two reasons, really. Number one, we know that the students who are likely to be the most successful in sixth form are those who've got an idea of what they want to go on and do in the future because they've got that vision and they've got that drive to work towards that goal. But equally, you know, we want to make sure that the students who study with us are on the right pathway. We want them to leave and be successful in whatever they choose to go on and do in the future. And so for that reason, we do place an awful lot of emphasis on our work-related learning programme. And at that point, I'll hand over to Mr. Maxfield, who can tell you a bit more about that. So as I've already touched on already, we have a really comprehensive programme to help students who don't have an idea on the careers they wish to pursue at this stage. And that's not a problem. It's, a, it's something that we can work on throughout their time in sixth form so that when they come to the end of their year 13 studies, they've got a clear idea on the path that they'd like to go off and follow. So there's many things that we do. The first one being that we focus and have one-to-one -one meetings with them to discuss and come up with some ideas on the types of careers that they might like to pursue in the future. Now that might go off their interests, it might go off 
the subjects that they study, but we spend some real good quality one-to-one -one time working on and drawing out these key interests that they have that could then present some career opportunities that they go on to in the future. We've got many platforms that we do this on, so it's not just through discussions with the members of staff. We also have platforms such as Unifrog, which is new to our student experience this year, where they can complete different tasks and different skills that will help give them idea on the careers they might want to pursue in the future. Further to this, we then pr pr really prompt that work experience process through going on work experience and getting an idea of what the workplace looks like. Students get a really ide good idea of whether that career is something they want to go and pursue in the future or not. So through these avenues, alongside other avenues that we've talked about already, the students will have a really good idea of the types of careers they might want to pursue in the future. And we can really help them focus and narrow that skill set down into what they want to go and pursue. Thank you very much, sir. Right, OK, I think we've got time for a few more. Uh, quite a technical question next, actually. Um, I'm an external applicant trying to apply for the sixth form. However, it says I need a Microsoft School or Work account. To be perfectly honest, it's probably beyond my technical expertise to answer that question here and now. But I think it's important to say, just generally speaking, if anyone's trying to access a part of the website and they're struggling with that, or if you can't get access to the application form, or if there's any problems whatsoever, the best thing to do is just to email the school. They'll make sure that your query gets passed through to the sixth form team, and then we can respond to you and make sure that you get put in touch with the right person who can help resolve your problem. But, but don't worry, if you contact us, we will make sure that you get access to the information that you need access to. Brilliant. Um, what if I don't like a subject once I've started it? That's an interesting question. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. There is a small window of time right at the start of year 12 where we can facilitate subject changes um, if we need to. Uh, often that's where students come in and perhaps, you know, try the subject for the first time and very quickly realise that it isn't for them. Then we can look at subject changes, but that is only a very, very small window of time. And the reason for that really is once we get beyond sort of the first few weeks of the term, if we were to change your subject and put you into a new subject, you'd be so many weeks behind everyone else in there that actually that process of trying to catch up, it, it would just be too much. We need to be mindful that when students join us at the start of year 12, they are only just fresh out of GCSE and that transition to sixth form is quite a challenging one in its own right. If you then add in there that you're starting maybe a month or two behind everyone else, that, that's probably just too much to ask of the students. So there's a very small window at the start of sixth form, but generally speaking, once you, you take those program, uh, that, choose that program of study and you start into the year, we don't tend to facilitate subject changes. Until then, we get to the end of year 12, the end of that first year, when we review everyone's program of study. And at that point, if we think there's a need to make a change, we can look at that and review. But again, that would be done on a case by case basis. The vast majority of our students go straight the way through to the end of year 13, studying the same three subjects. And actually, one of the things as a sixth form that we're most proud of is the fact that our retention, so the number of students that stay with us all the way through sixth form and complete their courses successfully, our retention figure is really, really high. Um, so the number of students that start with us at sixth form, you invariably will finish your studies with us here at Highfields as well. OK, thank you very much. We've maybe got time for one or two more. Uh, what time does school start and finish? Um, so school starts, it's a little bit different at the minute because we've got a slightly changed timetable, but generally speaking, the school day begins at 8.45. You'll have, for year 12 students, you'll have form time. And again, you're with us all the way through the day until 3.15 when school ends. For year 13 students, it's a little bit different. So year 13 have that flexibility and freedom to be in and out of school when they have lessons, when they don't have lessons. Of course, we often review that if students are not quite performing to the level that we'd expect. But generally speaking, most of our year 13s only come in for their lessons. But for year 12s, it would be an 8.45 till 3.15 school day. But I think another thing that's really great about our sixth form is many of the students take the opportunities to stay in school around those times to take advantage of you know, independent study opportunities, revision sessions, or just to generally speaking, get work done. So it's quite common that we have students in school from 7.30 in the morning till 5 p.m. in the evening. So again, those times around the school, they can be really, really valuable, particularly for our sixth form students. It's 29 minutes past six. I've said I'll be here till half past, so I'll do one more. Um, where could applied science take us for a career? Now, that's a very interesting question. Um, applied science is one of our applied subjects, as, as the name suggests. Um, 
In terms of the content that you cover on the Applied Science course, you will cover bits of physics, chemistry and biology. So it's quite a broad range of scientific uh, knowledge that you'll get. But admittedly, you won't go into as much depth as you would on a biology A level or a chemistry A level or a physics A level. Um, in terms of where you can go with that, to be perfectly honest, like I said earlier, our applied courses open up routes to universities, apprenticeships, and some of our students go straight into employment. So you really do have lots and lots of options. Um, a lot of the kind of typical routes that you'd imagine that are linked to science, the only ones really that are closed off from you are the sort of the elite pathways like your medicine and your veterinary science and so on. But the vast majority of other career pathways would be open to an applied science student. The best advice I could give you is if you go onto university websites or look at apprenticeship providers, they'll often give you information about what qualifications they accept and what qualifications they would prefer you to have. But like I say, invariably, unless you're looking at things like medicine or dentistry, the rest of the pathways you might want to follow, applied science would be an appropriate subject to take in sixth form. Okay, um, the time is now half past six. Um, we're going to take a short break. Thank you very much for all of your questions coming in. Um, that's, that's been really great. If we haven't answered your question in the first half of this Q&A, then we are picking back up again at seven o'clock. We'll do our very best to get through the rest of the questions then. But again, you know, if there's anything that you don't have answered this evening or you think of a question later, please do feel free to contact us in school and we'll make sure that somebody gets back to you and answers whatever questions that you have. Thank you very much. We'll see you in half an hour. <laughs>